video will break down six music video effects for Final Cut Pro 10. Now all of these effects and all these digital products you saw in the beginning of the video are all from my digital store. The link is down below so if you can go ahead and check out any of these products or you want to go ahead and buy them, the link is down below. And if you're wondering what plugins and what presets really are, they're basically like extensions that help you save time. So instead of having to like recreate an effect from scratch, you can just simply apply a preset onto it and it will just save you a lot of time. Again, the link is down below if you want to buy any of these digital products. In this video, we'll be going over six of my favorite. And we'll also show you how to actually install them and you know so you make sure they're correctly you know put in the right folders because it's really important they're things you should really make sure you're paying attention to or else these plugins and presets aren't going to work and the most important thing to know is if you're using any of my products you want to make sure you're running Final Cut 10.6 or above if you're running anything lower than that then these plugins aren't going to work so that's really important you want to make sure that step is done first so make sure you're running again Final Cut 10.6 or above or these plugins are not going to work so as you can see I had the promise filter and I had the camera shake presets um, right here now in the description of all the products it should tell you whether to go into a plugin folder or a preset folder but once you buy them and download them they should come in zip files now what you want to do is you want to click on the zip file and you just want to double click it the first I'll go over is how to actually how to install plugins because plugins and presets are different so what you want to do is you want to select in the zip file and with your mouse just simply double click it and that's basically going to unzip the File. All I did was I basically just compressed that folder just so it was easier to send. So you can see here is the folder. Now if you open it up, if you open up the folder and it has this icon, this icon, this icon, and media, make sure it looks like this. If this is white, then there, that means there probably was an issue, and I will go ahead and try to fix it. But if you if you open up your folder and it looks like this, or you know very similar to this, this is a plugin. So make sure everything that is all correct, and then just simply close out the folder. Now what you want to do is you want to head over here to Go. So select on Go click on home so select on home and then double click on movies and you should put it in your motions template folder now what you want to do is you want to select your motions template folder right click it click on get info as you'll see it'll pop over here and you want to make sure it says motion templates dot localized that is very important now once you open up your motions template folder you should have folders if you don't I believe you can also just create these folders from scratch I can't remember if Final Cut like default or if anytime you buy Mac it defaults with these folders but you should be able to just create these folders um, yourself and you have a general effects titles and transitions and all the product description should tell you where they should go so what you want to do let's say this is a pro miss filter this will go in your effects folder so what you simply do is take the folder just take the folder and then just drag it into your effects folder so if I open up effects folder and go to my effects you will see the pro miss filter as you see pro miss filter so this will go in your effects folder now what you want to make sure too is with the generators effects titles and transitions you want to right click on it click on get info and this window will pop up you want to make sure it says effects.localize, transitions.localize, generators.localize, titles.localize. So if you're running version 10.6 or above and all the folder structure is set up correctly and you place it in the right folder, nine times out of ten that should work. So before you you, you want to like you contact me if you have any issues, make sure those things are done. If you have followed all those steps and it still is not working, let me know and I will go ahead and fix it for you. Now that's how you install plugins. Presets are a little bit different. So for example, I have the camera shake preset. So if you if you just click on the zip file, double click it and open it up, you should have camera shake presets. And I think there's a couple of the presets that I have. So open up the folder. Now they should look like this. If your stuff looks like this with this icon, what you want to do is you want to select it and then just simply drag it out of your folder. So if that's the icon, if that's what it looks like, that means it is a preset. So this is a little more um, complicated. So what you want to do is you want to select on Finder. So select on the Finder icon. What you want to do is you want to head over here to applications. So you want to select on the application key. Now what you or the application section right here. Now what you want to do is you want to head over here to go and you want to hold down the option key. So as you can see under home there's library. So if I release the option key it disappears. So you want to hold down the option key and you want to select on library. Now once the library is selected, you want to open up application support once you're in application support you want to go to pro apps and as you can see effects presets if I open it up here are all of my effects presets as you can see camera shake 02 and then camera flash and then basically all you would do is you can see, see here are all the presets and you can just simply um, go out of this folder take the presets and then drag it into your effects presets folder and that is how you install 
um, plugins and presets. And if you follow all those steps and it's again still doesn't work, let me know. But make sure you know you follow all that. Make sure everything you know, looks right. And everything you gonna know, follow my my thing step by step. And st if it still doesn't work. Again, let me know and I will do my very best to help get it fixed. So as you can see, here are all of the effects. So this is basically the intro that you saw in the beginning of the video. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and basically just recreate it. So let's head over here to the examples. And the first thing I'm gonna go over is basically this really cool glow outline. Now this glow outline effect is gonna go in your presets folder and not your plugins folder. So what we're gonna do is gonna um, take the plate over here and what we're gonna do is click on Control T. And all that's gonna do is that's gonna create a title. Now you can also do this effect with like you know like a freeze frame cutout or a photo but we're just going to use use a title so we're going to go ahead and just trim the title i will just go ahead and select on the title itself and you can just type in whatever you want so we'll just type in little dirk obviously then the name of the artist or you know whatever you want to do so let's go ahead and let's just change the font to probably my favorite font and let's just increase the font and we can just just kind of like mess with the position scale let's just move it down here so it's easier to you know see what's actually happening so what we did we basically just created a text layer now you want to do is you want to select on the text itself, hold down the option key, and you want to duplicate it. Now what you want to do is you want to apply the glow outline effect to the bottom layer. So anytime you duplicate something, you want to place it to the bottom layer. And if you can't see the outline, you may want to decrease the scale of the actual like photo or freeze frame. That could also help. So head over here and we'll go to the effects panel. And all you're going to do is just type in glowing. And then as you can see, glowing outline. Take the glowing outline preset and again, place it on to the bottom layer. And as you can see, now you added a really cool glow to the actual text. You can head over here and mess with the blur. And then you can also head over here to the color tab and basically just simply adjust, like, change the color of the glow. And there you go. That's how you use this really cool glowing outline preset. The next effect I'll go over are these really cool like Polaroid frame overlays. So what you want to do is head over here to titles and generators. And then if you go over here to generators, and then we can just type in um, Polaroid. So as you can see, Polaroid frame, and we're just simply gonna place it on top of the clip. Now again, this is a generator. So you wanna put it in your generators folder in your motions template. So we'll go ahead and let's decrease it to maybe something like Control D um, 15 frames or something like that. So let's do maybe like 15 frames. So in the, in, in the intro, you saw three. I'm just gonna do two just cause it's gonna save a lot of time. So what you wanna do is you wanna select on the overlay itself, head over here, actually no, go over here to this icon, this generator icon, as you can see here are all the public parameters. So let's take this scale, we're gonna increase the scale a little bit, and we want to adjust the rotation, and we wanna increase the scale a little more, and we wanna move the position down to something like this, and we can just move it over here, and there we go. So there is the first Polaroid frame. Now all you can do right here is just simply select on it, hold down the option key, and then duplicate it, and then select this one, and we can just take the position, and then we can just simply move it over, and we can of course adjust the rotation, something like this so again you just you know keep messing with this and again you could add more layers and stack it on top of each other but i, would, I don't i just, I just want to save a little bit of time now, as you can see there's a little bit of a text layer you can select on each one of them go over here to text and you can either type something in or you could just simply just backspace and delete the text so if you want to add like a, like a date or something like that you could go ahead and do this and basically this is just a little bit easier than just using basic overlays so basically we can use drop zone so you don't have to like take a picture adjust the scale and position and crop you can just simply use a drop zone so what we're going to do is we're going to go forward like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames. And we're just going to offset this um, a little bit. And the base we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to find the place where it fully covers the screen. So right here. So we're going to go ahead and see the, the, the middle of the two clips. We're going to basically just go over here and then maybe we'll adjust this frame a little bit. So basically what you want to do is you want to find the place where the Polaroids are completely covering the screen. Whether it's two, three, five, or whatever. And you want to place it in between the two clips. So you see if we go frame by frame, the Polaroid basically just pops up and then a couple more frames and the next one pops up and as you can see then we transition into the next clip so you basically want to find the place where the Polaroids completely cover the screen and you want to place it in between the two clips now you can head over here to the media tab and basically we can just use these drop zones so select on the, the overlays itself go over here to drop zone select on the drop zone and we're going to select on this photo and there you go as simple as that now you can also like adjust a lot of the settings so you can adjust the scale you could also adjust the position of the photo 
photo. Now we can go over to the second one, go over here to drop zone and we can select on this photo. And again, you could select on it and adjust the scale, the position, all that kind of stuff. Let's move the position over to something like this. And there you go, as simple as that. Now basically take those simple steps and make it even more advanced. So we go ahead and play the video. As you can see, they basically cover up the screen and there we go. Actually, we'll, we'll decrease, see if we can increase this clip a little bit longer just so you can get a better idea of what's going on. So there we go, let's just increase the, I mean, we can decrease the duration of this a little bit. Again, this is just kind of like trial and error, but basically you kind of see what's going on. So we go ahead and play it. As you can see, covers the screen, there we go, and reveals the second clip. So that is a really cool um, plugin. The next preset I want to go over is this really cool camera flash transition. Now what you're going to need is you're going to need an adjustment layer. Now if you're new to Final Cut, what I would do is I would download the free adjustment layer and the free motion blur plugin from Ryan Nagel. Now I didn't include any of those in any of my packs just because I assumed everybody already has those. But if you're new to Final Cut, download those two plugins. The link is the link is down in the description below. They are essential for all Final Cut Pro users. We're gonna go over here to adjustment layer. We're gonna take this short and we're just gonna place it on top of the clip. Now what you want to do is you want to select in the adjustment layer and click on Control D and then we're gonna set it to six and then click return. All we do is we set the duration of the adjustment layer to six frames. Now we're at the beginning of the adjustment layer we're gonna go forward one two three frames place a marker one two three so the total duration of the adjustment layer is six frames and you're placing the first three uh, the, the uh, first three frames on the first clip and then the the last three frames on the second clip so basically just you're placing the middle of the adjustment layer in between the two clips and all you're simply going to do is head over here to the effects panel We'll go ahead and just exit out of here, and then we'll scroll down until we find it, and then camera flash, simply take the preset, and then all you gotta do is just simply apply it onto the adjustment layer, and there you go. And see if we go to the, the middle of the adjustment layer, it's completely covering the screen. So we play it right here, you have a really cool camera flash transition. Very simple and very easy. The next effect one I'll go over is this really cool Pro Mist Filter. Now this is gonna go in your effects folder in your motions template, so it's a plugin, not a preset. And all you simply do is you wanna find a clip with like a light source or something that's really light. So for example here, if you place it onto a clip with like there's no really like any like light source, it's just not gonna look that great. So if we go over here to the effects panel, we're gonna go over here to all, and we're just simply gonna type in Pro Mist Filter. As you can see, Pro Mist Filter, and just simply apply the effect on onto your clip. Now what you want to do basically all you want to do is head over here to threshold and then just simply adjust the threshold and you could adjust the amount too if you want to make it even brighter but just simply basically you want to place it onto your clip and then just decrease the threshold and there you go. So here is before and then here's after before after before after again you want to apply this effect onto a clip with like a light source it's just going to look a whole lot better. I'm going to go ahead and just disable the pro mist filter and head over here and I'm going to apply the channel blur. Now channel Channel blur basically creates the film halation effect. So we have placed the channel blur onto the clip, which is simply placed on the clip. As you can see, nothing really happens. What you want to do is you want to uncheck blur alpha, uncheck blur blue, uncheck blur green, and you only want to have blur red selected. Now let's increase it a lot just so you can see what's going on. So what you want to do is you want to select the clip once only this is checked, and you want to increase the amount. And basically, all you can you can see right here, this really cool. Actually, this is a better a better um, a, a representation. So you can see, look, here's before, and then here's after. So you can see even on this little bit, you see a little bit of this red blur. It basically like simulates the film halation effect you would get from Dehancer. And there you go. That's basically how you add some really cool like. Um, and then you can apply, and you can re apply the Promise filter. So you have like a Promise filter effect and film halation. Kind of emulates Dehancer. Um, this only costs like ten dollars. So it's a lot cheaper than Dehancer and you can go ahead and go in Cinepack or somewhere else and find a really cool film LUT and there you go. You basically recreated the Dehancer effect for like maybe $55 instead of spending $400 on a plugin and there you go. So it basically it's under channel blur so don't get confused if you you can't find an effect called film halation it's actually just called channel blur and that's how you use it to create a film halation effect the last thing i want to go over is this really cool camera shake preset pack now again this is going to go in your preset folder not your plugin folder so what you want to do is you want to take an adjustment layer and place it onto the clip you want to select the adjustment layer and click on Control d six frames now what you basically want to have is the first two frames on the first clip and the last four frames on the second clip so you can see one two middle one two three 
three, four. Simple as that. So there you go, just simply um, apply an adjustment layer on top of the clip. Now what you wanna do is you wanna head over here to the effects panel and then go over here, let's just exit out of this and we're gonna go to camera shake presets and we're gonna take camera shake zero two. We're gonna apply the preset onto the adjustment. And basically all I did was I just keyframed the position. So simple as that. So we go ahead and play the clip. Obviously this is gonna look really weird. So if we play the clip, as you can see, it just kind of like shakes around, kind of looks really weird. It kind of like, it just kind of is a weird shake effect. As you can see, you can see the black bars and I will show you how to fix it. Again, this is just a preset. So basically essentially what presets do is they're just there to save you a lot of time. So we go ahead and play it again. As you can see, it just kind of the whole screen, it just shakes. Now let me show you a couple things to make it look even better. So what you want to do is you want to take in another adjustment layer and you want to place it on top of both clips. So you simply want to place it on top of both clips and, and above the adjustment layer. Now what you're going to do, you can select on this adjustment layer that doesn't have the camera shake preset and we're going to increase the scale to 125%. So as you can see, basically if I decrease the adjustment layer, now the black, the black like edges have disappeared. So there we go. If we play, it might be the playback might be a little bit laggy. If we go ahead and play, it just, it's just because of the screen recording that's kind of lagging on Final Cut. But as you can see, that looks a lot better. As you see, now you don't see any of those black edges. Now what you can do too is you can add motion blur, so moderate motion blur two. And we're just gonna place it on top of the adjustment layer, basically only where the shake is actually happening. So as you can see, it adds a little bit of blur. And this is also a free adjustment, a free plugin um, from Ryan Nagle. So we play the video. As you can see, there we go, really cool camera shake, but also with some really nice um, motion blur. Now another little tip that I wanna show you is if you want to like adjust the actual keyframes so you can see this is the adjustment layer this is the adjustment layer with the camera shake preset now if we go ahead and right click on it we can click on show video animations as you can see here are all of the keyframes now you could of course go to the adjustment layer. you could you could actually like select on the adjustment layer you could actually ex you could actually I mean go ahead and maybe get a better representation let's hide the video animations and let's basically just increase um, the duration of the adjustment layer and then you can right click on it and then you click on show video animations and then you can see you can go these, these um these keyframes and you can move them so you can actually adjust the keyframes or you could go to each individual keyframe and this of course is going to give you a different look so you could also like use like the right and left arrow keys to go to each individual keyframe as you can see see the keyframe and then you could adjust the position so you could actually manually adjust the keyframes and the, the actual like, position of so it's a very customizable effect so if we right click and click on hide video animations now we extend the adjustment and adjust the keyframes so it's going to look a little bit different so it's not you only you're not only stuck just to that it's very customizable the same thing with the camera flash preset so we play a video that's what it looks like it looks a little bit different so it, it's very easy to customize these presets anyways hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you found it helpful and informative if you enjoy these types of videos make sure to hit that subscribe button also make sure to check out my digital store if you're looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro plugins presets and transitions anyways I'll see you in the next one peace